Okay, I've come back a few hours later and we actually got a surplus balance now. Some of the staking rewards have come through. And we should be able to withdraw this and send it to the charity address. So let's go ahead and withdraw. Let's confirm that transaction. And if we go and look at that transaction in the Block Explorer, just need to wait for that to go through and we can see we've got a transfer from 0x05F384 to 0x605 for 0.0000002, basically the staking rewards. And that should also update the balance in the wallet. We connect that again. We can see the surplus has gone down to basically nothing. The liquid staked token, the STE, has been transferred across to this address. It's been transferred to this 0x605 address, which is the address we set as the charity address in the contract. So that's working nicely. So next step is I want to publish this site. So we've got the React app running on local host, and this is quite a good option if we want to kind of run it locally as a decentralized application. We can actually run front ends ourselves, but I also want it a kind of a public facing web interface, which you can get to via a normal standard domain name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use GitHub pages for this. I'm going to open up GitHub Explorer, or sorry, the GitHub desktop client, and I'm going to create a new repository. So I'm going to call this give forever a perpetual donation vault using liquid staking tokens. Give it a description. Um, I don't want any of this stuff because that would be included anyway when I copy the files over. And let's publish that repository. I don't want to keep it private, I want to make it public for no organization. I'm going to copy these files from the local directory and I copy them files over to the new GitHub repository directory. So let's publish these changes. Let's open another console, open PowerShell window. We're going to run a build command here. npm run build. It's pretty hideously big. What this is going to do is going to create a kind of production build for us. So React kind of is a framework for building it locally and then it's going to kind of optimize it it's going to put all the kind of pack all the javascript together create versions for older browsers and things like that it's going to bundle all that up and then kind of create this production files that we can deploy to a web server or in this case we're actually going to deploy it to github pages so while that's creating the optimized build let's go and have a look at our github repository so i'm going to go into my personal github account And if I go to repositories, got this give forever one. And once we've built it, we should see another directory here once we've uploaded the changes. So let's just wait for that to build. Compiled successfully, build folder, home page. Okay, we don't want to serve it. What we want to do is Push out these changes. Huh. So I wonder if the changes aren't being seen. So I wonder if they're maybe being blocked by git ignore. Let's have a look. Yeah, so production build, we want to uncomment this from git ignore so that we can actually recognize them changes. The git ignore file is kind of used to not recognize things like you've got like a .n file or something like that or node modules you don't particularly want in the public repository. So there we go, we've got all our static files here. Let's go ahead and upload them.
Now, if we go into the project settings, we'll give forever, template repository. Uh, we want pages down here, code and automation. Let's zoom in a bit. Deploy from branch. I'm gonna select branch main and uh, we can't use the build folders. We have to use the docs folder, that's fine. Save. All I'm gonna do is run a different command. I'm gonna move build to uh, docs. Let's check, let's check that's done it. And I'm gonna upload them changes, which should remove all these folders. Docs. And that allows me to um, point the GitHub uh, pages site at this docs folder. Whenever we rebuild the site, we're gonna have to move it across the docs again. We have to remember to do that. I'll create some kind of automated command. Okay, so it's not loving it because it's uh, it's looking for these static files in the root directory and we're not actually in the root directory, we're in the give forever directory. Okay, so we've got a bit of an error there. We can fix this by going into the package.json file and adding in a home page with the URL, including this um, subdomain, which is causing the problem. It's the, the router uh, trying to locate them files. So let's save that, rebuild, rename this docs again, and push out the changes, go to the site, and we're live. So we've got the Give Forever D app running at jamesmachini.github.io. And the nice thing about this is, is that the code's also on GitHub so that someone can run that locally as well. If they want to run it as a fully decentralized application, they can run it locally on their own device. Let's go ahead and tidy this up a bit more. Let's go into the app.js, create a connection status, connection, and I'm gonna give the user a string for this. I'm just gonna put not connected. So then when we get to connect, I'm gonna do set connection, connected, user address. Sorry, I'm gonna to have to change this to backticks just to dynamically insert this variable. And then Connection status, we're gonna want down here. So on this connect box, we have a little div. Uh, class name equals app.connection. We're just gonna have connection status. Let's just make the text list really small because it's gonna uh, stand out. There we go, not connected. Connect, we're connected to our wallet. Here. The final thing I'm gonna do is change the button color to the same blue that we're using up here. So color, on the background. Let's also tie up the input a little bit. There we go, we've got a slightly nicer style of buttons and an input field here. We can connect our wallet, we can add the amount we want to deposit. We can deposit them funds. Once that's gone through, it'll update the balances. And we can also withdraw funds from the contract surplus funds to the charity address. And you see that's gone through and the surplus is reset to zero because those funds have been redirected to the charity address. In the next section, we'll be building up some unit tests to test the smart contracts and make sure they're suitable and they're kind of secure and they're okay. And we're going to be doing unit tests on all the different functions before we deploy it to the free and mainnet.